Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be making this video today. I am currently three months postpartum. Today's video is going to be my birth story slash vlog because I was able to take video along the way when I was in labor and then when I gave birth, but I'm sure there are holes in it because I was focusing on giving birth and getting through labor and so I thought I would also do kind of a sit down part where I would kind of tie all the pieces together and I was in labor for 21 hours and then I was able to give birth naturally very lucky and so grateful that I was able to do that we have a very healthy beautiful happy little baby boy his name is Milo and he is three months he's downstairs right now with his dad and his dad is gonna come be in the end of this video to share a little bit about his thoughts about the whole process and everything but first I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get into the story and tell you guys from the moment I went into labor to the moment I gave birth what that whole experience was because honestly overall I had a really great experience being pregnant and also giving birth I loved my giving birth experience I had I was very lucky as I said and I had a very positive birth experience. I'm trying not to make this video super super long but if you know me you know I can talk a lot and bear with me okay I will try to do the cliff notes version of it. Tristan wrote literally everything down when I was in labor what would happen when and what time so that I would remember. It all becomes a little bit of a blur because it's so chaotic and you're just like in pain and you just don't you don't remember all the little details and so it's nice when you can go look back my due date was march 27th and i gave birth on march 25th so i was 39 weeks and five days i was very stressed out about going over my due date and having to be induced and i really didn't want to do a c-section just because i wanted to experience what it was to like give birth naturally and what labor felt like and i went into giving birth actually saying i did not want an epidural i said i wanted to try without an epidural so i could feel what the contractions feel like and but I but I said to my doctor I have no problem like asking for an epidural if it gets too much which it did I right, so on March 22nd which was three days before I gave birth I went to use the bathroom and I had literally the tiniest it was like a dot of blood I never bled at all through my whole pregnancy like never had a drop of blood so this was very like weird to me and I was like is this the bloody show like the beginning of the bloody show or like what's going on you know so I was like ooh, this is different all this time before I gave birth I was always feeling very heavy pressure like very very heavy pressure down down there like super low it had been happening for weeks and then also would have like cramps every once in a while down there and it would feel like period cramps so I would always think I was going into labor but they would go away so and then on March 24th me and T went on a little date night we, we kind of it was like kind of like our final date night and it's so funny because at dinner we actually talked all about like who do we want to be as parents and what do we want to do with our kid for our kid how do we want to raise our kid what values are super important to us all the details and I, I mean this is not the first time we've talked about this you guys don't worry um we've had plenty of conversations before but this was kind of like the final final and on the way home that night around like 8 p.m i was having like cramps but as i said i had been having cramps for a while at least a week already and so i thought oh this is normal i either ate too much and then i'm having like stomach pain that's like kind of cramps or it's just like the cramping that I've been experiencing the past like weeks so I didn't really think anything of, of it honestly and then we went to bed around like 9 or 9 30 10 and then I woke up at 11 45 because I was cramping and it was like painful <sighs> okay guys I think this might actually be the start of my labor vlog I came home and from date night and from dinner and I was having like slight cramping in the car but I just thought that I had to pee so and it went away that was like 8 30 and then we went to bed around 10 30 and that was fine and then I woke up at 11 45 I had cramping well at first I thought it was because I had to pee and then when I went to pee I like barely peed it like stained like brown so I don't know if that was like the beginning of a bloody show or what but the 
contractions, like the cramps kept going and I've been timing them and now they've been every five minutes for almost an hour. And they're like painful, but they're not like so crazy that I like can't, like I was laying down the whole time and I just breathe through them and I can still talk and everything. And, but my contraction timer said to go to the hospital. So, but I've only been, if this is really labor, like in labor for like, I don't know, like an hour, <laughs> which I wasn't, I always wanted to like labor at home for a really long time before going to the hospital. Um, so I think I'm just gonna wait a while. I told T to go back to sleep because like he should, he was really tired yesterday and he should rest. I might go downstairs and just listen to music and see, cause I just, I don't think I can sleep, sleep. I'm a little excited and nervous. So if they go away, then I'll go and try to go back to sleep. But so far they've been every five minutes for almost an hour. So it's so funny cause I have my, doctor check up tomorrow morning well in like nine hours so we'll see either i was too excited or the pain was a little too painful for me to go back to sleep so i thought okay i'm gonna get up i'm gonna go downstairs and i had already envisioned what labor was gonna look like for me like what i wanted to do when i was in labor like i wanted to be in like a very zen environment i wanted to like play my birth playlist light some essential oils be like calm practice breathing maybe get on my like exercise ball and like bounce and like change positions get in the bathtub labor in the tub like i had this whole idea of what labor would be for me and let me tell you guys labor was nothing like what i imagined and what i what i wanted and what i expected like totally not um i don't know why it just it just didn't progress the way i thought it would um so anyways i went downstairs was around 1 a.m because i just like i laid in bed for like an hour trying to like see if i could go back to sleep but i just could not so and i was timing my contractions the whole time and it was every five to six minutes and i was like hmm this has never happened before like could this be it this might be it you know i was like getting really, really excited so i went downstairs around 1 a.m and then i called my dad because my dad is in arizona and so he it was like daytime for them it was like 12 p.m for them so he was like midday chilling at home called him and i was like hey i think i'm having contractions and so it was really cute i stayed on the phone with him for like four hours and then i called my sister too and she hopped in on the call and my mom was here by the way she was here she was downstairs sleeping so my dad was so cute he was like timing my contractions for me even though i was also timing them on my phone um and he was so he was timing them and he was like well doesn't seem like false labor to me you're having them every five minutes or so so you know what's the plan and t and i had talked previously about when we would want to go to the hospital because in thailand the, in bangkok the traffic is so bad you guys on a monday morning when we had appointments to go to see the doctor it could take an hour and like 30 minutes to get there so we did not want me to have to be in the car for like an hour and 30 minutes in in labor if possible we could avoid it so we i was talking to my dad and i was like i think that i think that we'll probably head to the hospital around like 5 or 6 a.m because that's when there's not a whole lot of traffic traffic starts around maybe like 6 37 a.m it was a monday morning so it was not a day to get caught in traffic um i thought like maybe 5 5 or 6 a.m would be an ideal time to, to head to the hospital to avoid traffic tristan came down around 4 30. We, we talked and we agreed like yeah we should probably head to the hospital so even though i honestly wanted to stay home longer Louie, you're gonna meet your little brother baby today Okay, hi guys. I managed to take a quick shower and I've been laboring for the past like four hours um, downstairs in the living room by myself um, and I called my dad who's in the US. Oh, I'm having one right now. Wait, hold on. Okay, so it's 5 a.m. now, and um, it's been like pretty much consistent contractions for five to seven minutes for a while, and now it's like five 
minutes, maybe sometimes even like four and a half minutes and the contractions are definitely getting stronger. So I feel like I'm definitely in labor. Um, but yeah, the past five hours I've been laboring with my dad on the phone. <laughs> I just wanted Tristan to like get some shut eye and have energy for today. I was fine with myself, honestly. It was like not that bad. And now it's starting to get like pretty painful. And I'm pretty sure I'm leaking amniotic fluid or my water is like slowly breaking or something because I'm like starting to leak fluid right now. So, and it's a little bit brown stained. So I don't know if that that could be meconium maybe but we're packing up right now and we're about to head to the hospital so i'm gonna go wake my mom up this guy bearsy do you even know what's going on right now you're gonna have a little brother soon you know that baby <laughs> I'm gonna go to the hospital. How often though? Every like four and a half minutes. Okay. For five hours already. Okay. Changed into sweats and like this big shirt. Very comfy. Contractions are still coming pretty often and they're getting, I think they're getting more painful. It's five. 37 to like 5.45, basically probably when we're gonna leave and it's right now it's saying 20 minutes to get to the hospital, which is actually so good. I don't think it's hit me yet that we're having a baby. <laughs> um, but I'm just in pain, you know, but it's all right. The pain, like once it goes away, I feel pretty okay. But I feel like they're coming a little bit, like a little bit more frequent at, at a time. And oh, I'm having another one. Okay, one second. <sighs> Ice in my water, please. Mama loves you. Is it real? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay. I love you. I still have but when they're gone they're all right when they're here they're like pretty freaking painful shout out to tea bear he packed everything we needed very helpful all my pillows back here we're bringing them just in case I don't know if I'll actually need all of them but we'll see all right guys see you later happy March 25th happy baby day happy baby day tea bear baby <laughs> we got to the hospital at 6 6.40 a.m. It only took us 15 minutes to drive to the hospital, which was the fastest time it's ever taken to get to the hospital, which is amazing. Um, and it's funny enough, that day I had an appointment at 9 a.m. to go see my OB to have a checkup um, and talk about potentially inducing if I go past my due date. And um, I remember I asked you like, you know, we were talking about, we were saying like, you know, a lot of women go in for this appointment and then they end up having to give birth that day and they didn't expect it and so I said should I should we pack our bags for the appointment tomorrow and he was like no nah, I don't think so but I actually so that I went into labor before we even headed to that appointment they took me to a room where they did like an initial checkup and they checked my contractions and my contractions were every five minutes and when the nurse came in to check me my cervix first of all I did not know how painful a cervix check was okay and so she checked me and she was like she looked so sad. She's like, 
you're not even like you're zero centimeters it's not even open it's still really hard like rigid and i was like i've been in labor since 11 45 and it's like 6 a.m i've been in labor for like s almost seven hours and i'm zero and i'm ha and the pain is starting to get a little bit like more intense like that kind of freaked me out a little bit honestly it was just really disheartening because i thought oh six hours i must be at least like two or three or four or something you know but i was zero that's what the nurse told me and i was so sad so she told me i could go home and come back later and i was just thinking oh my gosh like it's starting to really hurt and now i have to go home and then i have to labor at home and then i have to come back get in the car and come back like that doesn't sound fun <laughs> guys so when we got here they checked me and they said i was zero centimeters dilated which was really like discouraging to say the least because i've been laboring for like at that point seven hours already but my contractions were already like four minutes apart and they were pretty like painful so we just waited for our doctor and then he came like i'd say two hours later and checked me again and I was two centimeters dilated and 100% effaced so I could be admitted which we just moved into our labor room and Kristen just went to get the uh, pillows <laughs> that we brought for me um, and now I'm just having contractions and we'll see how fast we dilate oh wow I'm having one right now Oof. I'd say the pain level is at like a six. Yeah, five or six. They offered me like a shot for the pain and I said, I'm gonna try to keep going without any sort of pain medication so far. I might need it later. And once I get to four centimeters, I think is when they can give me an epidural. So I'm not sure about that either. We'll just see honestly where the contractions go and how painful they get and how much I can tolerate. And then I'll decide whether or not I do any of that stuff. So, and I'm not allowed to eat anything anymore from this point on. So it's good that I ate this morning at 5 a.m. Before I left, I had like a bowl of rice because my dad said I should eat a bowl of rice. <laughs> yeah, that is update now, you guys. Let me show you my room. It's actually pretty cute. The doctor came to check me the very first time I was there. Um, he actually did a membrane sweep. That was painless. They just He just put his fingers and then like detaches the, the sac from the uterus wall, I think. Um, the room was so nice, you guys. It wasn't like nasty hospital vibes, you know what I mean? It was, it was a very cozy room, actually. And my room actually had a bathtub, which I didn't expect. So at first, they attached a, um, a wireless monitor because I told them, like, I think I'm going to want to like move around during labor, try different positions. To, to handle the contractions and stuff so they put a wireless monitor on y'all i did not get i don't think i ever got up from my bed once i sat in that bed because the contractions were so painful i just didn't have it in me to even get up and try to get i think one time i stood up because i had to like go pee or something and it hurt so bad i was like i'm never getting up again it hurt more to be on my feet because of all the pressure that was happening down there like to be on my feet the pressure was just like intensified so it just was better to be laying down t wants to get all my pillows i brought all i'm so extra you guys i brought all my pillows t filled in paperwork and then he also gave me my push present happy birthday happy birthday mm -hmm. i'm having a contraction okay we're just gonna break okay <laughs> <sighs> Oh. <sighs> 
Hurry before another contraction comes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want one of those. Can I keep this, please? Thank you. Can I keep this, please? Okay. Wait. Ooh, it's little mine. Yeah. Bracelet. Yeah. You okay, my love? You're hungry. How is it since you're at the hospital? Just painful the same, I think. Is it comfy here? Is the doctor nice? It's gonna be okay. So by 10.45, he came and checked me again and I was still only two centimeters dilated. Like. It didn't change at all and I was so disheartened you guys and then he showed me the monitor and he said that the baby's heart rate had dropped significantly like once and he was concerned that the baby could have been could be in distress maybe and that maybe there was like meconium in my water which is like the baby's poop so th maybe the baby had pooped in the amniotic fluid so there might have been which is dangerous for the baby for, for infection and stuff so he wanted to break my water and I was like I don't really want to do that. I'm kind of like on the fence about that. And then, so then he said, okay, let's change. Let's remove the wireless monitoring. Let's put the the, the wired monitoring and then we'll see how baby does. Um, and then he left and then the baby's heart rate was better, but sometimes it would still like go down. When I would have contractions, his heart rate would like go down. So the doctor came back and he said that he still wanted to break the water. He thought it was just safer for baby. So I thought, I said, okay, that's fine. So... He went to break my water and he uses like this like wooden stick to like break my water and y'all that hurt so bad <laughs> like so bad and um i was very surprised i didn't know that breaking my water would hurt but also he was like trying to break the water and there was like no water coming out and i'm sure he breaks waters very often so he knows what he's doing and then i remembered you know the past few days i had been trickling like little like liquid every every once in a while and it was like not enough to say like my water broke but enough to be like that's kind of weird like a little bit of liquid like every once in a while and i was thinking there'd be like a leak in the sack and that i'm leaking amniotic fluid but i just thought no 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 there's no way that's happening but when he tried to break, break my water and barely any water came out i thought it clicked in my head i was like that's for sure what was happening like i was definitely leaking amniotic fluid a few days before and i probably should have called my doctor but i did not because it's dangerous if you start if your water breaks and then the baby doesn't like come out soon after that then it's not safe for the baby because uh, there's risk of like infection and so i thought for sure i've been leaking amniotic fluid because there's like barely any water coming out he definitely broke it but then like 15 20 minutes later there was like a little gush of water that can't not enough to be like the whole sack breaking from what i've been told there's like a lot of water that will like will like gush out but i only had like a tiny bit so then after my water broke the contractions were noticeably stronger and closer together so they were actually every two to three minutes instead of every four to five minutes at 12.20, I could not handle the pain anymore. I asked for the medication that they had offered initially, kind of the jab in my butt, which is like morphine, but not as intense. They told me it would make me a little bit like hazy. I was a little groggy and I, I felt like I wanted to fall asleep, but I felt like that medicine did nothing because the pain just kept, kept getting worse and worse. At 1.05 p.m., the doctor came back and checked me again, and I was only four centimeters dilated. Like, it was so slow. And so at that point, I was in so much pain, you guys. Like, the pain would come, the contraction would come, and you know how usually a contraction peaks once and then it, like, dies and goes away? My contractions were felt like they were peaking twice. Like, there were two peaks in one contraction. I did not understand why. If you asked Tila, he would say, like, I was gone. Like, if you looked in my eyes, I was gone. I honestly felt like if I had kept going, I would have passed out from the pain. Like, there was no way I, I would have been able to handle more pain than that. That's the most pain I've ever felt in my whole life. And if you ask me what it feels like, to be honest, it's, it's hard for me to describe to you now because... I think your body like just discards all of those memories of like the pain. <laughs> like, very strong like squeezing sharp pain in your uterus and it's just like very... In I'm sorry if this is a horrible description, I just don't know how to describe it. 
I guess period cramps times a million. Hello there. Oh, they're here for a little diaper change. And sometimes the pain would come and I would like cry and like shake and I was like, I just didn't know what to do. I couldn't change any positions to like try to make it better because I just couldn't think. Like there's nothing I, I could do in that moment. I just like was riding through the pain. It was so intense. I remember telling T like, I just, I don't know what to do. Like. I, I don't know how I'm gonna handle the next one. I don't think I can like get through the next one. I need the epidural, like please, I need the epidural. So once I asked for the epidural, the anesthesiologist, she literally came like three minutes later. She's like, hello, and I was like, hi, please give me the epidural. She was so, so, so nice, you guys, and she was explaining everything to me about what they were gonna do and how she was gonna administer it while I was having contractions and stuff, and she did, literally such a wonderful job i laid on my side and then like arched my back as much as i could and she like gave me the numbing shot what i remember from the epidural is that i just remember how deep it the needle felt like it was going into my back i was like whoa like i've never felt anything like go that far into my back ever first shot was painful the numbing shot and then when she started doing the epidural i could feel it so she had to give me more of the numbing shot it took longer than i expected like i thought i thought it, an epidural was like a one shot thing but it felt like she was doing like needle art on my back you know so it took about 15 minutes like 15 20 minutes and i couldn't move so when i would have contractions i would tell her and she would either stop or i would just have to like go through them and I would just like breathe really heavily and like make sounds like, like moaning the whole time like trying to get through it without moving because I last thing I wanted was like a failed epidural you know I wasn't able to lay on my back the whole time I was in labor because for some reason being flat on my back the contraction pain was way 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 worse so I was always on my side when I had the epidural she, I had to lay on my back after she finished so that it would go onto like both sides so both my both sides of my body would be numbed or else it would just be on one side and that was really hard luckily the epidural kicked in really fast um because literally my next contraction did not feel a thing not a thing like my nurse would be like oh you just had a big one did you feel that and i was like really i felt nothing insane the epidural was like chef's kiss like amazing but he had to leave for when i got the epidural and when he came back i was like a new woman you guys i was like hey i'm feeling great <laughs> i mean i could still feel my legs but the contractions you feel nothing like for really strong ones maybe you feel a little bit of pressure and a little bit of movement but no pain hello hi where are we at now well it's 2 p.m and i just got the epidural and i'm feeling good <laughs> Being good. Being good. Yeah. That pain. I I I don't know how people do it. I've uh, never experienced pain like that in my whole life. Is it since we? How was it since we arrived? Painful. A lot. Yeah, so much. Like I, I thought I was gonna die, and now I'm like four centimeters, right? Yeah, should probably more now. So I've been laboring for like. Fourteen hours. 14 hours. Yeah. What if you restarted at 12 and last only, night? Only four centimeters. That's crazy. Yeah. My legs are a little tingly, but I can still move them. My anesthesiologist was amazing. She, she was, was great. Like, she was so good. And like, I feel so good right now. How's that Dukta doing so far? He's doing really good. Yeah? yeah. You're happy with him? Yeah, I love him. He broke my water a while How was back. that? That was painful. Yeah. And then at 2.20 p.m. the doctor came back to see me and decided to administer Pitocin because I was on the epidural and sometimes contractions like will slow down when you're on your epidural because your body's not feeling like the pain. He started the Pitocin and then literally 10 minutes later it was a little scary because the nurse came like running back in. She like shut off the Pitocin right away to my IV because she said that the fetal monitoring detected the baby's heartbeat like drop right away when I started getting the Pitocin like really low so I had to get put on oxygen mask to make sure the baby was getting enough oxygen and then once 
at 3 p.m. when the baby's heartbeat kind of like regulated again, it was like normal, we restarted the Pitocin. At 3.05, I had my bladder emptied, which is the first time that's ever happened to me, which is so weird. At 3.15, I tried to nap and I couldn't, like I would be sleepy, but every time I would fall asleep, I would like freak out and I would wake up. I think I was just scared to fall asleep. I don't know why. And I would wake myself up and be like, you can't fall asleep, you can't fall asleep. Like, don't go to sleep. I don't know. I, it was like kind of scary actually. At 3.50, the doctor came in and checked me again and I was six centimeters dilated. At 4.15, I asked to increase my epidural by half a dose because I started to have a little bit more feeling in my legs and my left leg. I started to feel the effects of the increased dosage of Pitocin because the contractions, like I would feel more movement than I had in the beginning and no pain. But I was, I think I was really scared to have that pain come back at all. So I, the moment the I started to feel anything, like a little bit more, not even pain, just like movement, I asked for like a little bit of increase in my um, epidural. So they just gave me half a dose. And then I just sat there with T, like we were just together the whole time. And you know, as I mentioned, like I really envisioned having like this whole like zen environment essential oils going my birth playlist so and originally we did have the birth playlist playing but i'm the type of person i don't know why i thought that would be my situation but because i'm the type of person that when i'm in pain i need like complete silence like i cannot it, like any sound irritates me and so the music was playing and i was like in pain i was like t you need to shut the music off like it needs to be so quiet in here like please turn it off so we turned off turned that off and also i had given to you, like this whole list of like positive affirmations that i told him i need you to say all these positive affirmations to me while i'm in labor to remind me that i'm like strong that i can do it that my body was meant to do this the pain is like momentary like you're one step closer to meeting your son i wanted him to say all these things and i wrote them all down for him when it came time to it and he was doing an amazing job you guys and he was like saying and doing all the things they asked him to <laughs> and he was like i remember one time he was like you can do this and i was like i know <laughs> like don't stop talking to me it's <laughs> like so as i mentioned when i'm in pain i just like i can't have anyone talk to me i'm just i need silence and i didn't really realize that until in the moment it was happening and i apologized to t later i'm like i'm sorry if i was when, once i got the epidural i was like i'm sorry i was if i was mean to you like i i just like i didn't mean to it's just in so much pain and he was such a trooper like he was like no of course no don't apologize like it's fine you know I remember at one point he was like talking to me like giving me the po positive affirmations and I was like shh because I couldn't talk because I was in so much pain so I was just like shh <laughs> and I was trying not to be mean you know so <laughs> he got the message pretty quickly and he stopped talking to me and also like for example I, I thought I would love getting massage because I see a lot of women like when they're in, in labor they want that like massage really helps them and so my contractions came and I had really bad back pain and I was like, T, please massage my back. He started massaging it and it hurt so much worse. I'm like, stop massaging my back. Don't touch me. <laughs> like, so as I said, like my expectations of what labor was going to look like for me was just totally opposite of what actually happened, which goes to show you that, you know, a plan, a birth plan is just that it's a plan and that whatever happens in the moment is just gonna happen and just you just need to go with the flow and not be like too too rigid and then at 5 45 the doctor came back to check and he said i was fully dilated at 10 centimeters so my doctor has this strategy where once i'm fully dilated at 10 we don't start pushing right away and instead we wait for like an hour before starting to push to have the baby naturally move down the birth canal um, by himself and so when it comes time to push you don't have to be there for like hours pushing because the baby already does it himself he naturally like moves down himself if you just wait once you're 10 centimeters so i waited and he had been slowly increasing my pitocin doses for stronger closer contractions and so at 6 15 i increased my epidural by half a dose because i was like i was feeling these stronger in more intense contractions not painful as i said but just i just felt felt it like the pressure and the movement i felt it and it was scaring me at 6 20 i thought i was gonna pee my pants i don't know why just all of a sudden i was like oh my god like i really need to pee so i asked them to like empty my bladder again hi baby 
6.25 p.m. Your chin centimeter is dilated. Okay. And my doctor wanted to give me an hour for the baby to move down more before we start pushing. Okay. 20 more minutes, I think. How are you feeling? It's tired and I have the shakes and nervous. Everything is going to be okay. Thank you. Are you excited to meet baby? Yeah. And then at 6.30 to 7 p.m., I fell asleep with T like holding my hand. And I think during this time, I also started to shake. I got the shakes. And I couldn't tell if it was because I was scared, like really scared for the moment that I that, like I had to actually give birth. Or because I was, T said it was probably because I was tired, all the medication I was getting, the liquids, and that I was scared. So I started to like shake. And it was actually, that was kind of scary for me because I was like, why am I shaking? Is this normal? Is this just mental? T would tell me to breathe and we would breathe together. He would hold my hand. Slowly, like, the shakes would start to, like, subside and then I would fall asleep. And then, like, we kind of repeated this over and over again until um, the doctor finally came to see me at 7.20. And he got me to do practice pushes. So I pushed two times and he was telling me that he was a little concerned that my contractions seemed to not be getting stronger and closer anymore um they were kind of just like staying the same and he actually got to go look and he saw the baby's head like there and he could see like the, the head of hair the doctor said okay let's wait a little bit longer we'll see if the baby has moved like lower because the baby was still i think quite high where are we at now Chibel? we're probably gonna push in like 15 minutes again Second round of pushing. I hope I don't have to push it at all. How are you feeling? I'm okay. It's just a lot of pressure and some pain down there. How was the first push? 10, 15 minutes I, I felt like I wasn't doing it right. I have to push harder and I didn't, I'm just a little scared. Any pain? Not when I push, not really. But that's because his head is not like, it's not the ring of fire yet. Okay. Almost there. Excited to meet baby? Yeah. I I'm also really head, tired, know? huh? I just so scared, you know? Yeah, so much hair. Trick T said he had so much hair. Yeah, very hair. Oh, I'm that. having a good traction. So he came back like an hour later at 8.32. The whole time that I was waiting for him, you guys, I was having major, major, like, pressure and pain, actually. Like, and it kind of felt like it was in my butt. Like, it felt like a bowling ball was trying to come out. It just felt like really heavy, 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 heavy pressure. Some people say they feel like this uncontrollable urge to push, but I didn't feel the urge to push. I just felt like there was something big wanting to like come out and like I had to just hold it there and and it was painful to hold it there. There was never really an urge like, oh, I really need to push. Like never really got maybe a little bit, but not so, so bad. I had that for like an hour. What actually helped was relaxing through the pain and pressure. So like when I would feel the pressure, I would just like be like, Relax your body, breathe. So then he came back at 8.32 and he said it's time. And um, I pushed through two cycles of contractions, maybe like three pushes each cycle. And it literally took me like seven minutes to push him out. And I think the hardest part about pushing him out was when the doctor would tell me to stop because he had to like readjust baby to make sure I try to make sure I don't tear because I had said that I was definitely I did not want to be cut I didn't want to have an episiotomy if we could avoid it at all costs every time he would tell me to stop like mid baby coming out it would just feel like a really sharp like strong burning sensation and that that hurt like I could feel that but it didn't, I don't remember it being so painful. It was just like a burning sensation. I feel like the contraction pain was way worse. But then again, I was on the epidural now, so. The doctor also said that my blood pressure and my heart rate were going like really high when I would push. So he said like, if we don't get him out in the next few pushes, he's probably gonna need to cut. So I pushed really hard and he came out. What really helped me during pushing honestly was like, everyone's encouragement and T's encouragement especially because he would tell me like because I couldn't see and he would say like oh he's here he's basically here just keep like one more push one more push like he's almost here that really helped me and like motivated me to like keep going like I could he's almost here he's almost here I don't know. You want to push? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
And I remember when I gave, when he actually like came out, it felt like like a little octopus coming out. I was like, blah, 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 blah. like that's that's the only way I know how to explain how it felt. It was so cool. I will always remember that feeling like my whole life. And then the doctor put him on top of me, and I remember thinking like, wow, like it's an actual human being. He's so big, and like that was inside of me. He, when he came out, he cried, and then when I started talking to him, he he kind of had a moment where he was like. Like he recognized my voice and he looked at me. Oh my god, my heart. And then he kept crying. <laughs> I like held him for a bit and then they took him to do some stuff with him like right next to me. And then they started to like massage my stomach like aggressively. I think this is for either like the placenta to come out and then also to manage hemorrhaging, I think. It wasn't that painful when they were massaging, a little a little bit painful, but I was honestly so distracted by watching Milo. The whole time I was just like staring at him so when as they were massaging so I literally didn't think about anything and I thought the doctor was like stitching me up and then the doctor told me you didn't tear like and he said that was incredible like that he, he was so shocked that I didn't tear and I'm so grateful that I didn't tear and then after we like got to spend a little time with Milo um, they took him to the nursery and he could go with him to do get his vaccine and his like eye ointment and stuff I was left alone in the room and I remember just being on so much like adrenaline I wasn't tired. I was physically tired, but not like sleepy tired at all so I called my dad and I told him that we named Milo after him like his middle name and my dad cried and it was just like so cool to be able to call my dad like during like right after I just given birth I still had a saline drip and Pitocin to manage the postpartum hemorrhaging and T was sending me photos of Milo the whole time in the nursery hi guys that was actually wild but we did it and we have a baby and I'm a mom. We did it. Means he did it. I just can't believe it. Labored for like 21 hours. And right now, baby is with daddy in the nursery, just getting checked on. And we have a baby. I'm a mom. Crazy. After an hour, they came back, and then we packed up all our stuff, and then we went to the recovery room where my mom was waiting for me. We spent two days and two nights in recovery, and really the only pain I had after giving birth was an external hemorrhoid. That really hurt, so it hurt to like sit on my butt. <laughs> and I wish I had one of those donut pillows, but I didn't. And I had a little bit of cramping in the uterus, you know, as like, cause like the contractions to like start shrinking the uterus were happening. And that was a little bit painful, but like not unbearable. Like I took no medication either. Then the next day I remember my whole back and my body in general were really sore because the epidural like fully wore off and I guess I was like really tense the whole time and I didn't realize it and so all my muscles were like really sore and I really felt that the next day. The first time that I peed after giving birth, it like stung a little bit but really not bad at all. We overall just had such a wonderful, wonderful postpartum experience. The nurses were all so, so nice. They taught us how to like swaddle, how to change his diaper, how to bathe him, how to do all this stuff. We felt very, very, very supported and very not left alone. We did not want to leave the hospital because everyone was so nice. We said like it felt like kind of like a family and like family was all coming to help take care of Milo. I was so happy. I remember the days after I gave birth because I was like, I love being here and like having my 
Milo and like figuring out how to like take care of him with help and people are so nice and supportive and T is here and my mom is here and like it was just such a wonderful I was so happy and I was not in like pain like at all oh I did get medicine for the hemorrhoid I did take medicine for that walking was a little bit painful just because of the hemorrhoid like when I would stand up and it would it would put pressure there down there it did not hurt at all like I recovered so fast like physically because I didn't tear. I was very lucky with my physical recovery. So then we left on the second day around 9 p.m. to go home. I really want to thank all of the doctors, the staff, and nurses at Bumaran International Hospital, which is where I gave birth, which is where I saw my doctor. They were really truly the ones who made the experience what it was and they were so supportive, encouraging, loving all along the way. If anyone is living in Bangkok and you're trying to figure out where to go to trust someone with your pregnancy journey, I really highly recommend Bumangrad. Okay guys, I just brought Milo and T here. How was the whole like pregnancy experience and birth experience on your side from the moment that we like found out we were pregnant? Well, it was really good because, you know, like we chose Bumangrad especially and our doctor especially because uh, in Thailand it's very common to do to do C-section mm -hmm. and uh, it was very important for us and for you to as much as we can do natural delivery we wanted to be with someone that we feel like understood what we wanted the whole journey with the doctor like we felt we felt I think heard the whole time and really really supportive um, my doctor is a really big advocate for natural birth which was really what we wanted because as Tristan said like it's a really common thing here to do a cesarean birth and then how was like the birth experience for you? Yeah, I think it was really really good yeah yeah the two days at the hospital was like this hospital feels like a five-star hotel you yeah know? like it's mm -hmm. like the rooms are amazing mm -hmm. like the staff is very very attentive to everything you mm -hmm. need they really like yeah, made the the whole experience like really really amazing yeah like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah my my you had fun there too baby yeah. Definitely like a, a big big thank you to to all the staff and the doctors and everybody at Bumura because they really made this very very like easy, comfortable for us. They made it so easy that like you know like you feel like <laughs> we must have another key right now. Yeah, like, we're like <laughs> we're ready to go for number two because we love the experience. Yeah. <laughs> we love being spoiled over there. Yeah. <laughs> I would recommend Bumura to anybody like just because of the of the experience we had yeah. and uh, even more for for people that wanted to prioritize a natural birth and especially yeah. our doctor, our doctor yeah. is definitely like someone that would recommend like so thank you everyone at Bumerang Rod for bringing this little guy safely into the world <laughs> my my did you say thank you Thank you, my did you mom. say thank you, everyone? Thank you, my say, mom. Did you say you miss all the nurses that sh that were taking care of you? Thank you, everybody. They took such good care of you, huh? Thank you, everybody. Yeah. What was your highlight? Other than meeting my my, obviously. The biggest one for me is that it's when, like, right after mm -hmm. delivery, mm -hmm. when like uh, you had to do all these tests, and yeah. then like I they had to like bring me in another room, and yeah. it was just like him and me in this little room, and you really felt like. Like, yeah, we were having, like, this moment, the two of us, and it was just, like, the two of us in this world. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, oh, that's, that's the big one. Yeah. <laughs> bye, my bye, bye. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If I did, if you have any questions, please comment them down below, and I will try to answer them. And if you guys have had your own birth experiences that you want to share, I would love to read them, so please comment them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.